Good morning and welcome to the North Charlestown Church of God. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to ask this morning if we have any visitors or guests with us, your first time ever, you're back here visiting with us today. Anybody like that? I don't see anybody of that sort right now. But again, we uh, want to welcome everybody here. And again, the ones watching by web, those listening by CD, we want to welcome them also. Again, giving you a replay on our schedule of services. We're still just doing the Sunday morning and Wednesday night in the church building. We're still doing our webcast on Sunday night at 7 p.m., which is just this recording of this morning. It'll be playing this evening at 7, and then on Wednesday night, we try to have that for Thursday or Thursday at 7 p.m. This past Wednesday night, the electricity was off. Something had happened with a whatever, something blowed out over by the doctor's office or something. So we were without electricity half the day or half the evening, so we didn't get to do that and record it. But uh, anyway, that should be back on tonight, hopefully, and everything will go well. And then on Wednesday night, we're also letting our teenagers come back. And again, we're still practicing social distance, asking you to wear a mask if you will. Again, that's between you and the Lord. And then uh, also, basically all those things. Steve Hester still doing the same on the square on uh, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Hopefully through this month, maybe, who knows, maybe even through September, we just have to see how that goes for them. There's uh, some videos on YouTube if you want to see what goes on up there. If you look, I think if you just look up my name, mm -hmm. you should be able to find them on YouTube and they're on Facebook too. Okay, you heard that, so if you can. Tune into that also, a lot of good singing, a lot of good gathering together and again we're keeping social distance up there too or they are I'm not up there all the time but uh, anyway so uh, again those things we'll also mention again our annual budget meeting we'll be having the 27th of this month that's the last Thursday of the month the church calendar actually begins September 1st and runs through August the 31st and that's why we always have the budget voted on the last Thursday of the month. And we try to remind everybody that it's actually out there on the bulletin board. We try to keep that out there a certain amount of time. And then again, try to remind everybody of that. That's why I try to remember to do that every Sunday here lately because of not having ever services as we did before. But again, we'll be voting on the budget and also a couple board members. So uh, again, if you're a, a member, and when I say member, somebody with outstanding, you've been here for six months or longer, and you're over uh, 18 years of age, you're certainly welcome to, to be a part of that. So uh, again, those are some of the things we wanna let you know. Right now, we're gonna get ready to ask about birthdays. And before I do that, I didn't remember last week, uh, somebody that's watching us by web many times, has been a part of this church for many years, Don Jones, when he's watching, uh, we certainly want to let him know it would have been last week that we should have did that. But we certainly want to say happy birthday to Don Jones. And uh, again, Don's had a lot of health issues. We want to keep holding him up in prayer, and I'm sure he would love to be here if he could. So we certainly want to sing happy birthday to him but also is there anybody else in here that's had a birthday this past week any birthdays bruce yeah anybody else birthdays okay well let's see if you would lead us in birthday for bruce and don jones happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday god bless you Kathy, you was saying Bruce is how young? Seventy. Oh, okay. Seventy years old. Seven. I'm, I'm sure he would help you out too if I remember right. So, we always want to help each other out. So again, happy birthday again, Don and, and Bruce both there. Uh, any anniversaries been in the church this past uh, week? Any anniversaries? Okay. Also, uh, want to mention a few things. My sister-in-law, her uh, mother, I think they called her Val, didn't they, Sandra? She passed away this past Saturday from over in Louisville, Kentucky. Please pray for that family. I don't remember the last name, but it's my... What is it? 
and scored. And scored. And scored. But remember that family, if you will, please. And again, that's our sister in law, B. H. Drop's mother. And then also Peggy Williams. I don't know if you all remember, she'd had us, and I mean, she did quite a bit there for a while, but her sister from Texas that would come in here and visit with us occasionally. I think she sung and did a few other things when she was here. Uh, her name's Jerry, but she passed away the other day also. So we want to, and I don't have the last name, but we want to remember that family in prayer also. And then uh, also I was talking to Tracy there earlier. She had some tests this week, everything, or something that everything come back good, but her son's still having some problem with some breakout on his legs and arms. So we want to continue to pray for him. Billy Glass, it's good to see you back in here this morning. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Uh, also, uh, Doris Atkins that had a surgery on her arm. He is surely home taking care of her. But I uh, want to keep her in prayer. I know she was going for therapy the other day when I talked to her. She got out of the hospital the next day. So she's going to be probably be out for a while. But we want to remember her in prayer, her being bold. And then Rick Hartman, he was supposed to have something done earlier this month. And it's going to be a little procedure. Having it done in October. I remember him, Donna Summer, still with her hand. Uh, my wife, Sandra, she had uh, some shots put in her hand this week and doing somewhat better. We want to pray for that to, to help her out. And, and uh, also, I was talking to Glenn there a while ago. His wife and grandson was in a, I think it's your grandson, isn't it? Not great-grandson, but grandson. Uh, Billy and uh, Gavin, isn't it? Delaney. They were in a car accident the other day. And I think they got bruises, and I think she's a bit sore where the seatbelt grabbed her, you said, wasn't it? So we certainly want to keep them in prayer. And then uh, Serena here, her dad had heart surgery this past week, had one of his veins, had a stent put in, but he's also got to go back this Friday and have one of the main ones done. Certainly want to keep him in prayer. And that's Dwayne Fleener. So we want to remember him. And then Vicki Stoner, she's going to be having a procedure still done here in the near future. You ever get a date on that yet, Vicki? Oh, okay, so we want to keep her in prayer. And as I was mentioning, Don Jones still fighting with some cancer issues and then Heaven Williams with a tumor. And I've got a host of others. And I went ahead and shared those because I want to ask, has anybody had anybody in and out of the hospital this week that I haven't mentioned already? Like I say, it's good to see Billy back here. Anybody that you know of? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let's begin our worship this morning by standing and saying, "Him for what we're already standing." I'm going to, I'm going to learn to do that right one of these days. That we're starting out with hymn number 467. I must tell Jesus. Yeah. 
good to have you with turn to hymn number 664. What a friend we have in Jesus. Continue to lift up in prayer, and uh, again, as I said, uh, our sister-in-law, B.A. Stroud, her mother passed away. We want to remember her family in prayer, and then Peggy Williams, her sister, passed away there in Texas, remembering that family in prayer also, and then we want to continue to pray for Chuck, uh, again, Higgins, lifting him up in prayer. Billy, you're having trouble with your liver, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to be busy next week, five, four, four, five different doctors. Okay. You've had some loss of blood. We certainly want to keep him in our prayers. And then Rick, with his procedure there in October, Doris Atkins still healing up. Also for Donna Sumner's, uh, Serena for her and her pancreas still dealing with that somewhat. And uh, again, 
Dean, we want to keep you in prayer also. Also for Dolores Kent, uh, Angie Roberts, the hand's doing well, still right. Keep her in prayer. Vicki Stoner, uh, Vanessa Barrett, Judy Hall, want to remember them. Samantha James and her family still dealing with that breathing issues. Uh, Don Jones, we've done mention, of course, and Heaven Williams. Uh, Clint Kincaid with his back. Also for uh, Ann Wheeler, your friend Kathy, I remember. Again, Bobby and Lana Ashburn, and then Donna Pierce, and uh, again, her great grand granddaughter, Riley. And again, for Millie and uh, Gavin, as I'm still saying to Delaney, we want to remember them that was in a car accident this past week. And then for Serena's dad, Delaney, it'll be having heart surgery this coming uh, Friday. So we want to remember him in prayer. Janie, uh, Mar, didn't you tell me you're having some shots done this week too? You, Wednesday, yes. Oh, okay, you've been trying to do that for a few weeks yeah. now, so I want to pray for everything to work out well for her also. There's a host of others, and I'll just take prayer requests up in front, Bob. Family. Okay. Special unspoken. Okay, special unspoken <laughs> also. I have a cousin that's set for a double mastectomy September 1st. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here. Uh, for my brother Mike, who just had his other knee replaced for quick recovery. He's doing really well. So okay. Okay. Family. Family. Okay. Anybody else? Over here on this side, Ernie. Mom and family. Okay. Eric. From the son, that's spoken. Okay. Martha. For Joanne Dallas, she had a fall. Oh. Okay. Absolutely. Jamie. My family. Okay. Mike. Uh, my brother Steve and my daughter Amy. Okay, absolutely. Anybody else on this side? Prayer request? Okay. Over here on this side, prayer request? Sir? Okay. Mike? Myself, my mom, both are working with family friends. Okay. Lily? Yeah, Amen. He was the one who had a stroke here a few months ago. Yeah, and pray for Everybody knows he's Kenneth. Kenneth the third. Yeah. But he's doing everything that he should be doing. Hopefully he don't have to get up so first they all good. Okay. Billy? Just uh, don't keep my daughter in prayer. She got checked positive, so she didn't her house. How many with uplifted hands for yourself or someone else? Again, God see those hands. As we stand this morning, again, if you're with family, you're welcome to hold hands. If not, you can try to restrain from doing that at this time. Hopefully in the near future. Still praying for a cure for this bunch of craziness and for this to be over with for sure. And as was mentioned, definitely need prayer for our country. So let's agree in prayer here today. Lord God, as we come to You this morning, Lord, we want to thank You, Lord, for allowing us to gather in this house today. I want to thank You, Lord, for Your hedge of protection, Lord. We want to pray that it will reach in every one of us. Again, we want to proclaim the 91st Psalm that no sickness, illness, disease, plague, or pestilence come near our dwelling. Uh, we want to dwell under the shadow of the Almighty, the Almighty God that, Lord, we can still have Your truth, which is our shield and buckler. Uh, God, we still stand upon Your promises that we would above all that we'd be in good health and prosper even as our soul. We pray that over all our brothers and sisters in Christ in this building and those that are part of the body of Christ everywhere. Again today, Lord, we pray for those that have been in hospitals and nursing homes and rehab. We pray for those that have had procedures. We pray for Doris Atkins for her continual healing and health. We pray, God, for Billy, Lord, with his liver that you'll touch and move upon him. 
I also, for those that have, well, for my wife with those shots in her hands, pray that they'll continue to do well. We pray for the Delaney family that was in that car accident. We pray for Millie and Gavin both that you'll touch and move upon their lives. For Dwayne Fleener that had that uh, heart procedure done the other day, still having another one coming up this Friday. We pray, God, for success in that, Lord. We pray for Don Jones, Lord, that you'll continue to lift him up, help him through this most trying time. Uh, we pray for Heaven Williams for that, again, that tumor to shrink and be gone in Jesus' name, Lord. We pray for all those that have had loved ones that pass away, that you be with them. Uh, encourage and, and Father, lift, lift them up, Lord. Help their families that are going through these times. And, and again, Lord, I pray for those that, again, have faith in you, Lord, that, again, will trust that, Lord, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And again, we just... Pray for all these needs, Lord, for the ones upon our prayer list up here, for the things that have been mentioned by those that are out here, for things that are being prayed with us, Lord, as we pray with people that will be watching on the web and listening by CD. We pray for their needs as well to be met in Christ Jesus. We do pray for our country. We lift up, again, our leadership to be led by Your Holy Spirit. We do pray for our president. And again, especially after the loss of a brother, we pray for comfort for his heart and our family. And again, Lord, for this land, Lord, I pray for this nation, Lord, once again to be a nation under God with the liberty of Jesus Christ, Lord. Again, as always, want to continue to pray for our military, our police departments, fire departments, medical departments, EMSs, farmers, for all those that protect and serve us. We pray that you'll protect them, Lord. And again, Lord, we just pray that uh, things are going to turn around with this COVID-19. I pray that this thing is going to pass here in the very near future. And again, we stand upon your word, Lord, that all things are possible to them that believe. And our belief is not in our own abilities, but our belief is in you, God. And we just ask you to help us through these trying times. Again, for every hand that went up here today, Lord, we pray your, again, touch upon them, Lord. Father, for Janie that's going to hopefully get these shots this Wednesday as she's been trying to for the past few weeks, I pray that they'll come forth and help her. And God, that'll take some some pain and give her some relief in her body, Lord. We just ask God your touch upon that situation, Lord. And again, Lord, for all of those that are dealing, Lord, with heart problems, lung problems, arthritis, and all the different issues, we pray for those that are dealing with breathing issues, for those that are just going through some tough times right now, we pray for each and every one. Uh, we pray again, Lord, for our services today, anoint them with your Spirit. I thank you for the time that we've had here already for the songs that have been sung, for, Lord, to share it with one another, and just pray your peace upon every heart. Father, we ask all these things in Jesus' name, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. You'll remain standing just for a moment longer before we have the special, and I ask you to hold your Bible up. That way the person that's singing will, again, be able to jump right into that. Say this with me once again today. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. This is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. It is a lamp to my feet. It's a, to my feet. It's a light to my path. It's words. It's words. It's the height of my heart. That I might not sin against God. All Scripture is inspired of God. Blessed are the doers. And not the hearers only. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Charlie Gibbons, you're going to come up here and do a special for us now. Give him a hand as he comes up here this morning.
you will this morning, take your Bible and turn with us to Mark's Gospel, the fourth chapter. We'll be looking at the fourth and possibly parts of the fifth chapter today. I want to entitle this message today, Behold, I am with you. And of course, I'm talking about God. How many of you ever felt like maybe God is such a distance, you're really not sensing His power, His presence? And again, if we're honest, we've all had times where it just seemed like God is so far away. We're going through a trying time. We're going through a hurtful time. But you know, we've got to understand that even though we may not feel Him, even though we may not have all the goosebumps that we've had, even though we're still going through a storm, that He's still with us and that He's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. I know last week we were talking about we need each other. And as I was ministering, and I'll let you know that yes, we need God first of all. And yes, we need each other. But we also need to know that God's a very present help in time of trouble. That God's here not forsaken us. God's going to be with us. And whether we feel Him or not, or whether we sense His presence or not, God is right there in the midst of our, our situations. I want to read a, a little story this morning from a book I've been looking at. And this is about a, a lady that, uh, well, I'll just read. She was an abused wife. She said that her husband had tried to kill her. She said she lived in constant fear. One time when she started to cry, she just wanted to know what was happening to her. She said also she had a day that changed her forever. Her story is, it said, I grew up in a religious home, I'll just say that. Even as a child, I wanted to serve God. When I went to high school, everything changed. Wanting to fit in, I started the party scene, drinking and getting in trouble. I married young at 20 years of age, a young man with a troubled past, she said. I thought I could change him. How many women and how many men ever thought they could change each other? <laughs> Bless your ever-loving heart. But anyway, he became very violent and tried to kill her, she said, many times. She said, I was an abused wife for over 10 years. I did not want to give up on our marriage. We had two children together, and I think he had one also. And thinking now we have a family which we both thought would change things for us. We did have many great times, but with the drinking so much, things never did get better. I had no hope for a future. Has anybody ever felt like that? I had no hope. I say it especially past tense, I had. You know, you may be sitting here today thinking, I have no hope for a future. But i got to tell you, in Christ you do. But reading on here, it said, I had no hope for, for a future of happiness. I lived in constant fear. Many nights I would run out of the house for my own life. I started working at a restaurant with a friend of mine who also worked there. I, I knew, knew her for a while. But all of a sudden there was a change in her life. And she started talking about God. I had one time said the sinner's prayer with her, but no change happened right away. You know, sometimes I think people pray that prayer with a preacher or pray that prayer with somebody, and they think that lightning bolts are going to fall out of the sky. They think that everything's just going to instantly change. And yes, that born-again experience ought to bring that about. But just saying a sinner's prayer, there's got to be, uh, again, a time. I remember uh, Brother Cash many times before I got saved, I did it here because we do the webcast a lot of times. Uh, he'd ask everybody to say that sinner's prayer. And i got to tell you, I said that prayer with Brother Cash sitting back here in the pew about where Clift is at right now. said that prayer many a times. But i got to tell you, there was never no change in me. And it was because that's all I was doing was saying the prayer. I didn't have the earnesty to do what I needed to do. I needed to give it all to God. But she said she had prayed that sinner's prayer with her, but, but no change happened right away. For about a year, she said, I would take my children to church to Sunday school and let them off. But I never went in until one day my children asked if I could go in with them to see a Christmas play they were to be in. As a mother, I surely couldn't say no. As the service started, there was a woman who started to sing. And as I was drawn to her and to the song, I started to bawl. What was happening to me? A warm feeling come up over me and I was feeling totally loved and I was feeling peace in my heart. I was 31 years old, she said. 
And never in any of my earlier years of going to church did I ever experience anything like this. That day, she said, changed my life forever. I stayed in that church for many years. I learned what it meant to be truly born again and the importance of asking Jesus Christ to be both Lord and Savior. I realized my sins had separated me from God. My relationship with the Lord grew immediately. I had never read the Bible before, never had one, was never, never desirous. But then all of a sudden I was drawn to the Word of God. She said, I lived in the book of Psalms, which is a very encouraging book for sure. She said, I would like to say that things with my husband changed, but unfortunately they did not. Today I'm married to a wonderful Christian man. God was so merciful to me and to my children. My hope and trust is truly in the Lord. If He can save me from a life of torment and abuse, He can and will do it for you and your situations. Nothing is impossible with God. You say, well, that sounds terrible. Her, no, her husband never changed. What she didn't tell you is actually the book that I'm reading from, about 20 pages over, he gives his testimony. And no, in his self, he didn't change, but he died. No, he didn't die a physical death. He died a spiritual death. He got born again. And again, she didn't say that in that part there, but there was a change. And he made the statement in his testimony, I just got sick and tired of being sick and tired. In other words, I'm just tired of the life I'm living. I'm tired of the life that I'm going through. Have you ever felt like that? Hopefully we've all come to that realization somewhere and said, I'm just tired of being the way I've been all my life. I don't like being a drunk. I don't like being a drug addict. I don't like being a sexual bird dog. I don't like being none of those things. I don't like being hateful and stressful to other people. You just get tired of it, I'm sure. You know, I, I remember before I got saved, I used to think that uh, everybody loved a drunk. Anybody ever thought that? Everybody likes a drunk? But you know what I realized after I got saved? Drunks are hard to deal with, aren't they? <laughs> you know, she, she was talking about her husband, and I don't know that I was abusive, but I, I'm sure mentally and, and verbally I was to my wife and family too, but maybe not as the same situation. But you know what? I just thought drunks like to, you know, everybody would like them. They're just the life of the party. Well, the problem is, is everybody's not at the same party, are they? Everybody's not in the same feelings. But you know what? Again, when that change took place, I know that again, he changed me, but this woman talking about her husband, boy, I'm sure she prayed earnestly. I'm sure she prayed desirously. And you know, alcohol's not the only problem that people have. I know that there's a list of other things but you know, when we're going through things and we don't know how God's ever going to change us, we need to know that He's there with us. I wasn't intending on it. I'm not going to this morning, but I heard somebody talking about a fellow by the name of Jonah. You remember Jonah? Remember he got swallowed by the big fish, whale, whatever you want to talk, talk about? But you remember Jonah was fleeing from the presence of God because God was putting a mandate on his life to go and preach in Nineveh. Do you know that... Jonah, even though he run from God over and over again, it just kept saying he went down to there, he went down to here and down to there. But you know, at the same time, God never left him. You know, David in the Psalms, he talks about where could I go that the Lord wouldn't be? If I went to the depths of the earth, He's there. If I went to the highest of the heavens, He's there. Wherever I'm at, God is there with me. God is omnipresent, we know. And I've talked about the manifest presence of God. That's what we really desire nowadays because we want, and I think the description is called the Shekinah glory, when God just shows up in such a way where you know you just begin to, to fall prostrate upon the ground because you can feel the presence of God so deeply. You're so moved by His presence and power. 
Isn't that what we desire in our lives today? That God would so touch us that we could just sense His presence. But I do still have to be honest, even when we don't feel all those goosebumps and all the tickling and all the things that we feel good spiritually, God is still there with you. I don't care how far out there you are. I don't care how terrible you think you are. God is still there for you. You may not feel like it. You may not feel like you feel Him. But i got to tell you, He's still there whether we feel Him or not. I want to go to Mark's Gospel, the fourth chapter this morning. And I want to read through the first 20 verses here, and then we're going to skip to another place in that same chapter, and we'll finish up from there. But it says, in, in Mark's Gospel, the fourth chapter, starting with verse 1, it says, And He began again to teach by the seaside, talking about Jesus. And there was gathered unto Him a great multitude, so that He entered into a ship, and sat in the sea. And that's what we were talking about. Actually, last week he was in a ship when we were talking about we need each other. But again, talking this week, it says, And they were gathered together unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into the ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables and sat unto them in his doctrine and his te or in his teaching, hearken. I was watching something on the television the other night and I think whatever night we had the thunderstorms and things and I, I remember seeing that, you know, how they got the little thing on the bottom and it said, heed the signs that you read when they say high waters turn around on ground. You say, well, that's just a silly little thing. Well, if we can put heed on the newscast, how about we hearken and listen to God when we have signs all around us? I was thinking, man, they, they got King James on, a, on the TV tonight. <laughs> they got a heat on there. I mean, I'm thinking, hearken. It's like, man, they're they doing all right now. But at the same time, I, I'm just thinking, you know, how many times have we had signs in our life where God says, turn around, don't drown? Or God says, I'm there with you. Or God said, hold on a little bit longer. Or God said, be still and know that I'm God. And you say, well, I've not heard any of those audible voices. I'm not necessarily talking about a big thundering voice coming out of heaven. I'm talking about God speaking to the depths of your heart one way, shape, form, or another. But He says, hark and behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as He sowed, some fell by the wayside. And He's talking about the seed. And the fowls of the air, the birds, came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth. And immediately as it sprang up because it had no depths of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root in it, it withered away. Some fell among thorns, and thorns grew up and choked it and yielded no fruit. And others fell on good ground and yielded fruit. It sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. And you say, well, that sounds to me like God's trying to keep things secret from us. God's trying to keep things and mysteries to us. Well, when you read the next verse, it says, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. Over there in 2 Peter chapter 3, God said He's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. You say, well, this verse here is contradicting here. Then It's saying He don't want them to see. He don't want them to hear. What He's saying is, I don't want you to think you can get right with Me in your own flesh and blood. You have to have a spiritual encounter. It's not a carnal man or a woman. It's not a flesh and blood thing. This is a spiritual encounter. It happens inside of your heart. We call it our spirit, but it's still the heart, the, the essence of where God wants to touch and move upon your life. 
have you had a born again experience? Because that's what makes the difference. As I was talking about that lady this morning, that lady went through a lot of religiosity too. She went to church all the time. But folks, it takes an encounter with God to change your life. And again, that's why he's saying these things are done in parable because I don't want them to understand with a natural mind. I want them to have a spiritual encounter where their heart can be changed. I don't want their head to be changed. I want their heart to be changed. Can I tell you, if somebody can change your mind today, somebody else can change it tomorrow. But if God can change your heart, woo, Lord of God, it's changed, isn't it? I mean, He can change your heart for good, and I'm talking about for His good, not ours. Because within ourselves, we have no good, do we? But verse 13 says, And He said unto them, Know ye not this parable? How then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And again, I know a lot of people have preached this and said, you know, the sower sowing money. You know, they're putting money into a pot somewhere. They're putting money into the church. They're putting... This, this isn't what this is talking about. This is talking about the Word of God. And how many of you ever heard, you know, send in $100 and God will send you in a 10000 send in a, you know, this, that, and the other, and all that, that stuff. You need to give to the work of the Lord as your heart's compelled to do so, but you don't need somebody throwing a gimmick at you. Because we're talking about the Word of God. We're not playing and toying with it. It says the sower. And there is some places it talks about sowing into the things of this world. But not in the same essence as what people put it out there. Yes, you need to give good measure fresh down. But you need to give with cheerfulness from your heart. Not grievous because somebody pushed something on you or manipulated you. But here it says the sower soweth the Word. And these are they by the wayside where the Word is sown. But when they have heard... Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown where? In their hearts. So they did get it into their heart, didn't they? And we've talked about this before. You know the wayside when we're talking about, you know, when we're planting a garden. You know, usually the rows in between. And I used to help my stepdad and mom in their garden. I used to put out pretty big rows and stuff. And I know that, again, you'd have the rows and I've helped others in places with the back and everything. But if you went down the center there, the more you walked on it, the harder it got. But that's not where you put your seed at, was it? That's not where you planted your tomatoes at, was it? That's not where you digged and put your potatoes at, was it? No, you put them right in the row where it goes, but that wayside is where everybody walks and around the perimeters because the more it gets walked on, the harder it gets. And that's what it's talking about. You know, the heart is still hard. Have you ever met anybody with you say, that guy or that lady, they've got a hard heart? You know, only God can give you a heart of flesh. Only God can give you a heart that's tender. You know, there's some people sometimes that are pretty stiff to get along with, aren't they? They're, they're hard-hearted. You say they're uh, hard-headed sometimes too, but it, usually the heart is what makes that whole situation come about. But, but it says, and these are they by the wayside, I'll read it again, where the word is sown, but when, when they have heard Satan cometh how quickly? Immediately. And take it the word that was sown in their hearts. Well, I've seen some people before. I mean, you know, there was a good message being preached and, and there was an altar call and boy, they come right up to the front. Man, they was turning everything over to God and, you know, uh, wanting to be baptized in 30 seconds or less and all these things. And, and at that very moment, they're all on fire for God. But then the next week, they're not quite bubbly as they were. And then the next week, they're almost like getting there and then the next week you don't see them and then the next month you don't see them and then you may say hi to them at certain times of the year but, but other than that you don't see them no more. But they had that, that wayside experience but they never had that true, I mean, where everything just changes for good. I don't want a one-time experience with God. I want a, an eternity with Christ. But that wayside, because they're still hard, it don't penetrate enough because Satan's going to go in there who comes to steal, kill, and destroy? Satan. Who comes to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly? Christ. But it says, And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves. And so endure 
but for a time and afterwards when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they're offended. Well, I've met people, I mean, they're so spiritual, and I mean, dear God, you're thinking they're floating in the clouds sometimes. And, and I mean, they're talking about all this stuff, but then when persecution, when trials, when tribulations, you know, they're having trouble in their family, they're having trouble in their situation, all of a sudden they just get all discouraged and they walk away. They get away from it. Folks, that's where you've got to have some endurance. That's where you've got to have something that's down deep inside of you. I don't need it just on stony ground because stony ground, well, just reading on here, it says, when afflictions or persecutions arise for the Word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the Word, and, what, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches and lust of other things entering in, Choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Wow. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, I'm talking about the worldistic system. The love of the Father is not in him. For the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the pride of the eyes that are the lust of the eyes, the lust of flesh, and the pride of life. It's not of this. It's not of God. It's of this world. It's going to pass away. But it says, and these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. Some, again, thirty fold, some sixty, and some a hundred. It got down into the depths of their heart, it got down into the depths of their soul. Their life is just growing. Their, their life is, is again, a, just a spring. I mean, you know, the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow, what is it? Rivers of living water. I mean, that Holy Ghost power is flowing through them, and God's using them for His kingdom. He's bringing fruit. And again, now we got the basics of the Word of God. You know, the Bible also says, "Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God." But it also says in the next verse, and that's actually over Romans ten seventeen. But if you read the next verse, it's talking to the Israelites. It said. But have they not all heard, yet have they not all obeyed? Just hearing the Word and not being, you know, when we hold our Bible up on Sunday, we go through that, you know, blessed are the doers and not the hearers only. I don't want to just hear the Word. I want to do the Word. I first of all need to hear it. I need to receive it. I need to grow in it. But i got to, again, follow it. You know, Jesus has got promises. God's got promises all through the Word. But there's conditions many times, isn't there? If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you're my friend, you'll do whatsoever I say. Does he say anything that's out of the ordinary? Does he say anything that we should not do? Does he not lead us in the right paths? You know, even in the Lord's Prayer, it says, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. How many of you need God to do that daily? How many of you need God to, to deliver you from evil, to keep you from falling into temptation? You say, well, well God wouldn't deliver or God wouldn't lead you into temptation anyway. No, but if you follow something other than His Word, you're already walking into temptation, aren't you? If you're walking outside of the truth of God's Word, then you're already walking for a set place to fall. But I want us to skip on over here to verse 33 of the same chapter, and we'll just see how far we can go here today. I may go into the fifth chapter a little ways. And it says, And with many such parables spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. As they were able to take what he was sharing with them. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. He explained things to them. And again, this is during the time that Jesus is on the earth. This is actually before you know the resurrection. You know, He makes it plain and simple to us today. You say, what do you mean plain and simple? Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and He'll save yourself. Mm -hmm. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Ask Christ in your heart. He'll change your life. Repent doesn't mean penitence. It means I turn from my ways to His ways. But anyway, it said, but without a parable spake He not unto them. And when they were alone, He expounded all things to His to his disciples, and the same day when, when the evening was come, he saith unto, unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And this is usually 
the major part that I use this scripture for, but it's not the only part I want to dwell on today. He did say, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm. You know, like I say, usually I want to expound mostly on let us go to the other side and, and we can talk about going to the other side of eternity. But I want you to focus just for a moment. There was a storm. Dear God, there's going to be storms in Christians' lives, isn't there? Amen. I mean, there's going to be storms in your life whether you're Christian or not. Right now, we're going through a storm we've never seen before. This COVID-19. We don't know what's real. We don't know what's right. We don't know what's wrong. We don't know what's being this, that, and the other. We have a hard time with it. And we know that it's having an effect on people, don't we? We know that there's some reality to it, but we don't know, again, everything about it. It's very confusing, and especially when you got so many voices talking at the same time. <laughs> but I mean, there's danger out there. Like I said, heed the warning. <laughs> The warning's not necessarily I need to, to be safe from COVID-19, which I do, but the warning is I need to be ready for eternity. I need to be ready for heaven. Because when this life is over, again, only what's done for Christ is going to last, praise God. So uh, again, it says... And when He has sent... Well, let me just skip that verse... And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Guess what? The boat's sinking. <laughs> you ever felt like you were sinking? I was sinking deep and sinking. Well, we've all been there, haven't we? <laughs> but the boat was sinking. I mean, there got Jesus in the boat with them. And the boat's sinking. I don't get that, do you? I don't understand. You know, I did all the religious stuff. I said the prayer. I got dumped underwater. I was loyal to church. I paid my tithes and offers. I did all those good things. I did all those wonderful things. But my boat's still sinking. I don't get it. Behold, Jesus said, I'm still with you, right? Amen. But again, we're usually looking for feelings, aren't we? I don't want to feel like my boat's sinking. I don't want to feel like I don't know where God's at. Well, they knew where Jesus was at, didn't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. And He was in the hinder part of the back part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake Him and say unto Him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Have you ever felt like does God really care? I dare say everybody's had some times in your life some of you, I look out over the people in this in this building today, and I'm sure people watching by the web, listening to my CD, I, if I knew who you were, and again, if you're people I know, you've had situations in your life. You've had hurts, you've had pains, you've had losses of life, you've had uh, sickness, you've had different things you've went through. And there's bound to be some people sometimes that felt like, God, don't you even care? I'm going through a storm right now and I need you, glory to God. I don't need you yesterday. I don't need you tomorrow. I need you right now. And again, I know I've said many times, you know, God's never early, God's never late, but God's right on time. The problem is I don't know what the right time is to you. Have you ever heard that old saying, God will never put more on you than what you can handle? That kind of stinks sometimes, don't it? <laughs> when you're going through a hard time and somebody says, I don't know that that's always the perfect thing to say. Yes, it's true, but it's not always the right time and place to share that with somebody. When they're hurting inside, when they're going through a problem, I don't know that I want to hear that Scripture that says, you know, God, and you feel like, God, I've already got more than I can handle on me. I'm about to fall apart. I'm about to bust. Everything's falling apart. I need You, Lord. I need you not yesterday, but right now again. But it says, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And it says, verse 9, 39, And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Boy, isn't this what we all need? Peace be still. Dear God, don't you want to hear that? 
as often as possible. God speaking into your situation, speaking into your heart, speaking into your pain, whatever you're going through. Peace be still. It don't mean much when I say it, but when God says it to your heart, when you hear it from His Spirit, it means everything, don't it? When you're going through a heart problem, when you're going through a lung problem, when you're going through a cancer situation, when you're going through a loss of a love, when you're going through family problems, children's problems, whatever it is, and all of a sudden you can hear inside of your heart, peace, be still. That's God talking to you. That's not some man or woman speaking to you. That's God telling you, I'm going to bring some peace to this situation. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. <clears throat> Again, God never promised us there would never be storms in our life, did He? He never promises that we'd never go through trial. Matter of fact, it's actually the opposite many times. And like I've said to you many times, you know, if you got some preacher that says, you know, I get saved and I'll never have another problem, you don't need to get away from them, you need to run away from them. Because they're not telling you the whole truth. They're telling you a partiality somewhat. But you know, again, God will allow you to go through trials and tribulations. Why? Because this world's not my home. <laughs> I'm just passing through. And my God, He's the God of the universe, but there's a God on this earth right now. He's a small God. He's a little G when you look at Him. But it's Satan. And He's out to hurt and hinder anybody He can. We was talking about the Word there a while ago. You know, when it talks about, you know, when things come our way and the cares of riches and all these other things that hit us many times, and cares could be translated worries also, when things begin to hit us, we have to decide, do I have enough deepness with God inside of my heart that I'm going to make it through or am I going to give up? You know, I've talked to people before that are going through hard times and I don't always say it to them, but you know, you got a choice. You can get bitter, you can get better when you've had some tragedies in your life. And again, there's a time and a place for everything. And I, like I say, you don't want to say that when somebody's right in the middle of the hurt, but when they're starting to kind of deal with it and want to talk to you about it, you've got a choice. Am I going to get bitter with God or am I going to get better? Talking to a lady this past week, and I, I mentioned this Wednesday night when we just had a few of us talking to a lady at a place of a business and got to conversate with her about you know the Lord Jesus Christ and, and she shared with me how she'd had some major losses in her life. She'd had a, a, a terrible divorce and then eight months later she lost her son, a, a, just a teenager in a tragic car accident. <coughs> And she said, people asked her, you know, are you mad at God? Are you giving up on God? And she said, you know what? If it wasn't for God, where would I go? If it wasn't for God, what would I do? And she even talked about listening to one of the Christian radio stations one night and they had one of them hope centers you could call. And the lady said, I was about at the brink of, of losing it. You ever felt like you was going to lose it? And said, I called and somebody prayed with me. And somebody encouraged me. Like I said last week, we need each other, don't we? Mm -hmm. But you know, people were trying to ask her if she just would just totally give up on God. Why would anybody want to give up on God when God's never give up on you? You know, if I didn't have Him when I went through the storms of life, who would I turn to? Because usually the, the ones you're turning to is the ones you're having storms. They're having the same storm. And you can't put your burden on them because it's too heavy for you, let alone for them. I need somebody that will carry my burdens. Yes, I know we're to carry each other's burdens, but again, that's our, our prayer needs. But there's a burden that I can't carry, and that's my eternal life. That's my life that only comes from Christ. But I need, again, that calming of the sea sometimes, don't you? Amen. And He said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? When he's talking about being fearful, he's talking about timidity. He's talking about being cowardly because there is some good fear. I know people say there's never good fear. I guarantee you there is. 
you, you take a child and, and they put their hand on a hot stove, they don't want to do it too many more times, do they? There's nothing wrong with being afraid of heat, is there? And, and I mean, if you see a train coming, it's a good thing to stay away from the tracks, isn't it? Yes. I mean, there's, there's some good fear. And when we talk about the fear of God in the book of Proverbs, the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, understanding. The fear of the Lord is to hate, pride, arrogance, and every evil way thereof. Does that mean I'm scared of God, that I'm just so scared that I don't think God will ever care about me? No, it just means I reverence and respect the one that's in control. We need to reverence and respect even those in authority, don't we? Amen. I know you say, well, some of them are bad. Well, just because some of them are bad don't mean they're all bad, does it? No. We need to, to reverence and respect people in authority, but the one that's in total authority is Christ, isn't it? God's in the total authority of everything. We need to submit to Him. Why are you so faith, or why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? This is His disciples, by the way. I'm talking about those those great apostles. I'm talking about them ones that did all these miraculous things and Jesus just told them. You know, you read about heroes in the Bible and you're thinking, man, that's that's like Superman. That's like Batman or Robin. I mean, that's them superheroes that I grew up listening to when I was watching my cartoons and all that stuff. I mean, they're just awesome. But can I tell you, they were people too. And they had some times where they were afraid. I remember even David, he said, you know, what time I'm afraid, I'll still trust in you. I thought we were never supposed to be afraid. I didn't say we wasn't supposed to. I'm just saying there's going to be times in your life where you have to admit it. That I am having a trial. I am having, you know, this is scary for me. I don't know. You know, it's easy for me to say, you know, it, you know God will carry you through it. But when you're the one that just that. that got diagnosed with some kind of disease. You're the one that got diagnosed. You're the one that's having a family problem. You're the one that just had a, a child had some tragedy in her life. When you're the one dealing with it, it's a whole lot harder, isn't it? Yeah. I, I still like, well, I better read because I think we'll get to there anyway. But anyway. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obeyed him. And going into the fifth chapter here a little bit, it says, And they came over unto the other side. What did we just read? And they came over to the other side. I think it was Barry Manilow. Some of you remember that guy? Looks like we made it. God did tell them they was going to the other side, didn't He? They made it, didn't they? And again, I know it's a love song, but I'm telling you, there's somebody that loves us more than some love song somebody could have wrote. Because they did make it. I mean, there for a while, it didn't look like it. It looked like they were going to drown, even though Jesus told them they were going to the other side. And I did say, we've expanded on that before, but like I say, that there was a storm. But they made it to the other side, glory to God. I don't know how I'm going to get to the other side. I just know the one that's going to take me to the other side. How about you today? I don't know when I'm going to get to the other side, but I know the one that's waiting for me on the other side. How about you today? I, I don't know how I'm going to hold myself together through this life, but I know somebody that can. How about you today? But anyway, going on here, and it says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes, and, and when he was come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs or graves, whatever you want to call them, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and, and no man could bind him, no not with chains. I mean, the man had a, a foul spirit in him and I mean, they couldn't chain him down. Have you ever met somebody like that? I mean, <laughs> it don't matter what you, you couldn't hold them down. I mean, they're just wild as all get out. And I'm talking about just mean and everything else I was like with this gentleman. And, and I mean, you know, this is a demonic spirit that got a hold of him. He said, no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters or shackles and chains, and the chains had been plucked as under by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. I dare say no man can tame another man, period, could you? Amen, that's right. <laughs> 
But like I say, if somebody can talk you into something today, somebody else can talk you out of it tomorrow. But at the same time, for you to be able to tame somebody, it's going to take something more than that, isn't it? Yeah. For you to be able to quit drinking alcohol, for you to quit being able to take drugs, for you to quit doing all these situations that you get into, it's going to take more than that, isn't it? It said, and no man can tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. And that hasn't changed too much, has it? There's still people cutting themselves today, isn't there? We don't want to admit it that there's people. And again, I've said this before. Why do you think people cut themselves? You think they just want your attention? No, because they want to take the pain of one thing to another. They want to take the pain that's up here and put it here or wherever we're at. And again, I, I'm not riding that they're right or wrong. I'm just saying there's people that are going through pain sometimes. And, and again, to get rid of the pain that's inside of their heart, they're going to do something to, to hurt themselves to, to just get through these things. He had a demonic spirit. There was a spirit fighting with him. But when he saw Jesus afar off, it didn't say he walked, but he ran and worshipped him. I believe that was more so the man than it was the spirit, don't you? Oh, I'm sure, yeah. And those spirits are subject to, to Jesus too. The Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, you know, in heaven and earth. But at the same time, I believe that man, you know, there's people that when you look at them, they're the meanest, honoriest critters you ever met. But there's still there's a heart inside of there somewhere that only God can get to, isn't there? Yeah. And I don't know when God's going to get through to them, and I don't know if God's going to get through to them. All I know is I pray that God will get through. Yes. Because I dare say there's been some pretty rough critters in here, wouldn't you? I mean, we've got over two people in here today. I'm sure there's been some some pistols, we'll say, so to speak. <laughs> but but anyway, the man, I believe, was the one that worshipped him and cried out with a loud voice and said, and this is the Spirit, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit, and he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, which means many. And he besought him much that he would send them away out of, not send them away out of the country. And I've talked about into the abyss, I'm sure. Now there was there near under the mountains a great herd of swine feeding their pigs. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us unto the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. Those, those pigs would rather die than live with that foul spirit. I mean, it says 2,000 pigs. I mean, they all drowned themselves because they didn't want that spirit or those spirits upon them. You know, people have did some crazy things in their life, but there's been some foul spirits that have caused people to do some crazy things too. We don't want to forget that. Satan's out there to kill, still and destroy, and he's not went on vacation lately, I assure you. And they that fed the swine fled and towed into the city and in the country, and, and they went out to see what it was that was done, and they came to Jesus and, and see him that was possessed with the devil and, and had the legions sitting and clothed and in his right man, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told, told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And, it was, and when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed, prayed him that he might be with him. How be it Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done for you. Wednesday night, as I said, we didn't get to have the exact same type of service. We ended up 
having some candlelight once again, and it wasn't exactly like the one we'd had before. Before we ended up having singing, but this time we had a few testimonies. You know, it's good to let people know what God's done for you, isn't it? It's good to let people know that God's touched my life, God's touched your life, God's touched all of us, some way, shape, form, or another. And maybe you went through some tough times, tougher than anybody else, but God's still been there for you, hasn't He? Amen. And it says, He told him to go back and tell his friends how great things the Lord has done for thee and had had compassion on thee. But that man had been out there in them tombs for a long time, hadn't he? Just forget about all that. Best you can. But at the same time, what you can't forget, remember what God did for you. No, I'm sure you can't always forget everything that's happened in your life, every hurt, every pain. But at the same time, I can remember God showed up. God touched me. God moved upon me. I want to ask you this day, noon, I guess it is now, if you will, stand with me at this time. If you have a need here in this congregation today, these altars are open for you. If there's people watching my web or listening to my CD, if you have a need, that, again, there's a God that cares for you. And He has promised that He is there for us. He has promised, Behold, I am with you. You remember at, at Christmas time, we used that word Emmanuel. We have it on our Christmas cards and everything else. What does Emmanuel mean? God with us. God's with us today. God's with you today. If you have a need today, if you want to bring it to the altar, if you're out there lost and unknown without God or His Son, let's have a prayer. And again, I'll pray for the, the sake of the web listening. But at the same time, if you're here today and you want to pray that prayer, as I said, I prayed this with Brother Cash many times. And I'm not telling you it didn't help because I know God was working on me the whole time. But there finally come a time when I just totally surrendered. I had to. I didn't know where else to turn. Do you remember when the Lord saved you? <laughs> Wasn't that a wonderful day? Wasn't that a beautiful day when the Lord saved you? If you're out there or you're here today, just pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord, I ask you today to, to forgive me of my sins. I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart and save me. I, I confess my, my mouth Jesus is Lord. And, and I... I believe in my heart that Christ has been raised from the dead by the Father. And right now, I receive Him as Lord and Savior, and I'm saved and ready for heaven. In Jesus' name. And if you pray that, again, more or less words, you mean it, tell somebody about it. That may have been my problem. I never told nobody. I held it to myself. There come a day when you couldn't hold it no more, and the change come about. Again, as they sang this morning, play, if you have a need to bring to the altar, you're more than welcome to do so. Go ahead, Dylan. The engineer, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me.
wave over the ones that are listening here and web and CDs and also for our offering that's being received as you leave here or if you already know that that's fine. And again, whatever God lays on your heart. But let's agree in prayer here today. Father God, we just thank you today, Lord, for allowing us to have this time together. We thank you, Lord, for the time and the fellowship. We thank you for the song. We thank you for, the again, the love and encouragement. And we just agree with each and every one, Lord, for the Spirit of the Lord to touch and minister to our lives. We pray again for those that are watching by web that, Lord, you'll touch and move upon their hearts. See these also. God, just, Father, let your Spirit dwell upon we pray, Lord, as we go to our homes or wherever we go out today, that you'll keep us safe and in your arms. Protect us from all things, including this virus. And Lord, let your hand be upon us. I pray your blessings upon the tithe and offering today. And for those that give blessings, and for those that have not to give blessings as well. And we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Again, remember, tell somebody you love them. Don't shake hands or hug next right now. But again, tell somebody you care. Come back and be with us Wednesday night if you can. And remember our webcast. If you get somebody who wasn't able to be here tonight at 7 p.m. And then Thursday night at 7 p.m. on the web also. Have a great day in the Lord. God bless.